Welcome to the Executive Innovation Show podcast, where we bring you real executive conversations with industry game changers and thought leaders. We ask the questions you're thinking, what you're scared to ask, and we make your brain hurt afterward. With your host, Carrie Jitsi Wells, co founder and CEO of One Touch Video Chat, live video interviews, and the nonprofit Humans Helping Humans. Today we're talking about how you market your telemedicine. So you've picked a telemedicine software, which almost every practice has at this point. If you haven't, you need to get on that very quick so you can open your digital doors and start seeing patients again. But now that you've picked it, how do you let patients know that you're doing it? How do you make it as easy as possible, especially for the 50 and older crowd that you uh, take care of? to interface with your telemedicine, increase adoption rates, and continue to see patients very, very frequently on a daily basis. So I wanted to talk to you about a couple things that we do with our clients as a marketing, a healthcare marketing agency that has been really effective helping them adopt the technology, increase patient retention, start seeing more patients, and scale their telemedicine visits. So number one, and it's super easy, but surprisingly people are just still not doing it, is you've got to get the information up on your practice website. Easy enough. Again, get it up on your website. So once you've chosen a telemedicine provider, you wanna make sure A, that you have COVID related information that you can deliver to your patients on your website. Tell them, are we open? How are we keeping people safe? What is our plan as it comes to the phase rollouts? All of those kind of things you need to make sure patients know at the ready when they visit your website. Number two is make sure that there it's very easy, maybe even with a top announcement bar, to make patients aware that we are seeing patients telemedicine and when they go to that page, this is how our telemedicine process works. So they know how to book an appointment, how they're going to see you over telemedicine, what the whole process looks like and what to expect. Number two is communicate, communicate, communicate. Assume your patients know nothing. They don't know that you're open, they don't know how to do telemedicine, because oftentimes that is true. So leverage your social media platforms to put out a series of posts about how you're handling COVID, the fact that you are offering telemedicine and how they can book appointments. And make sure to continue that rhythm for new patients that are finding you online. And leverage your existing patient email list. Make sure you get out some communication and even mail a letter if you have to. Try to hit all angles for all ages depending on how people like to absorb information and try to hit on all of those avenues. Number three, I highly recommend that you adopt some type of online appointment booking capabilities. Some EMRs out there offer it in an iframe, but there's also a lot of HIPAA compliant online appointment booking softwares that you can integrate. It's just gonna make things a whole lot easier to when people get on your website to go ahead and book an appointment and receive the information about telemedicine and see you. Next up, kind of going along with that theme, is I recommend that you have text messaging capabilities for a couple different reasons. And again, your EMR may provide it. If not, I would recommend finding a solution for it. You're gonna be able to reduce no-shows by sending appointment reminders, say at three days before and one day before, to make sure that you're maximizing your time and not having a lot of no-shows. Number two, it's a great and easy way to get people up onto your telemedicine visit. It's just by texting them the link and they can go on there if, you're, if your telemedicine software has that capability. Number five is you want to try to avoid, if possible, when, when looking for a telemedicine provider, to limit the amount of steps required to get them on there and the most important being downloading software. The more apps or desktop downloads that especially a patient 50 or older has to do, the more likely it is for human error to be involved, which you really want to avoid. Otherwise, you're spending more time tech in troubleshooting than you are actually on the point of care for your patients, which is what this is all about. And a little pro tip is I would recommend making sure that you have 
some type of backup telemedicine option. And FaceTime or Skype for Business, something like that can be a really easy backup in the event of latency or downtime because telemedicine platforms are being stretched a little bit more than they ever have to say the least. So we're recommending too, because we've seen it and with different practices, is just have a, an option is in a what if scenario and you have a patient sitting in front of you and something happens that, hey, we can jump over to FaceTime really quick. And then when everything is fine, jump back over to your regular patient care flow and your regular workflows on your great telemedicine marketing software that you're using. If you follow those, it's really going to help you streamline this onboard of technology um, in the patient care uh, workflow, which is a little bit newer, especially for um, a portion of your patient population. So if you follow these, they're gonna be in the loop. And also don't forget is when you're communicating, do not leave out your referring providers is we're helping a lot of even medical device companies work with their reps to help practices remember to communicate better with your referring providers and their physician liaisons. Don't leave them out too, because just like patients, they can be out of the loop. They may not know you're open, that you're accepting patients, that you're gonna make it really easy from a point of care perspective if they do refer you patients. So make sure, leverage LinkedIn, leverage email to communicate to your colleagues and local providers that, hey, we're here to help you and your patients whenever you need us. Thanks for listening and best of luck out there. Stay safe during COVID and I hope you continue to leverage telemedicine to improve your patient care. This podcast has come to a close. To hear more from the Executive Innovation Show podcast, subscribe, submit questions, and share the love. Follow us on social. We're everywhere.